Welcome to Science at FMNH, a podcast and video series that explores the behind-the-scenes science, collections, and research at Chicago's Field Museum. How are birds collected for museums? What types of information can be gathered from bird specimens? In this episode, we speak with Jason Weckstein to discover the many methods used to collect information from bird specimens. My name is Jason Weckstein. I'm a staff scientist here at the Field Museum. A typical day involves waking up really early. When you study birds in particular, you want to get up and hear the dawn chorus. You want to get up a little bit before dawn, ideally, and get out into the areas. We open up nets, so we use mist nets to catch birds in part. And when we're doing that, we need to get those open as soon as we can in the morning. So usually one group of people goes and does that. Another group of people are out collecting with shotguns. That's one way that we sample some birds that don't land in the nets. So we try to get sound recordings of the birds that we collect if we can, and also just general sound recordings in the area. It's one good way of documenting the diversity that's there. We're also visually observing birds and keeping track of that stuff. And usually the people that are out walking come into camp at the latest by noon because we had a lot of things to process. In the actual camp setting, what's happening is birds are coming in and we start processing them for parasites. We first take blood samples. Those blood samples are the things that we're using, for example, to look at things like malaria. So we make a blood smear on a microscope slide. We take some blood on an FTA card, which is a special buffered paper that preserves the bird's DNA and also the DNA of all the creatures that are in that blood. Those creatures can be nematodes and then the different protozoan parasites like malaria. So we can use the FTA cards to get DNA of those and actually screen the birds for those different parasitic diseases. And then when we are able to get sufficient amounts of blood, we also freeze some in a nitrogen tank to keep things flash frozen so that DNA doesn't degrade, RNA doesn't degrade, and it keeps things in sort of the, it's kind of the gold standard of tissue preservation. And then we actually euthanize the bird and then we start sampling it for other things. So the first thing that we do is we fumigate the bird carcass with ethyl acetate, which is, this is what entomologists use to euthanize insects. So we're essentially using it to euthanize the ectoparasites that are on the outside of the bird. And we ruffle those off onto a piece of paper, pick those up and put them into vials and either freeze them or put them in 95% ethanol, which also preserves their DNA and their morphology. So we can come back, sort them, count them. And we use a special technique that allows us to actually not only gather specimens to understand who they are and what they are, but we can also understand something about what's called the prevalence and intensity of the infection of these parasites. So what that is is how many individual hosts are infected by the parasites, and then what is the strength of that infection, so how many parasites are on that host. So we can gather that kind of data from using the method that we're using in the field to ruffle them. We also do swabs of the birds. So we, we swab the buccal cavity and the cloaca, which is the bottom opening of the bird. We're swabbing those for viruses and bacteria. Well, that specimen then goes to the next person who is the preparator, and they're gonna prepare the bird specimen. So they actually skin the bird specimen. The way you prepare a bird specimen is you, you make a, a little incision on the chest and then you can basically pull the carcass from, from the skin, leaving the skin intact. And you cut certain bones, and then you've got the, the body separated from the skin. And the skull is also partially taken out. We leave a piece of the skull in typically in a, in a typical bird skin. And then you basically fill it with cotton. You basically first put a, a stick that has kind of a lollipop of cotton on the end of it in, that sort of sits in the skull. And then you make a cone-shaped body out of cotton, stick it in there, and then sew it closed. And then you tie a tag to the leg, and that tag is filled with all kinds of data. So as you're skinning it, a good preparator takes lots of pieces of data. Is the bird molting? What kind of fat levels does it have? What were the colors of all the soft parts? Like, what was the color of its eye? What was the color of the skin around its eye? So feathers don't typically fade in collections, but skin color, bill color, those kinds of things can fade and change. So we want to keep detailed notes on that. We take photos often of live birds when we can. I'll actually draw a picture in the field notebook and on the label. There are complex patterns, so birds have really complex bill patterns to sort of indicate what those color patterns are. The next part of things, you know, so that person prepares a skin, but there's also the carcass. 
And the carcass is important because we essentially do a necropsy of that carcass, and that data also goes on the bird tag. So we look at things like gonads, so the ovaries and the testes. So we, we basically figure out what's the sex of the bird by looking inside. And then we can tell a whole bunch of things about the bird from looking inside that we can't tell from looking on the outside. So we can tell whether the bird's laid an egg before. We can tell whether it's a juvenile, um, whether it's bred before. Is it in breeding condition now? Or is it, is it in a refractory period uh, of the year where it's not breeding? And those are all data that go onto the tags and ultimately go into our database. Uh, we can also tell something about the age by looking at the skull. So the skull has um, little windows on it on young birds and those fill in on older birds. And again, there are exceptions to that, but we, you know, we're, we understand a lot about that. So we use that data. Um, we note that data on the tag. Plus we're taking a whole bunch of tissues. So we're taking things like liver tissue because we can use that to screen for certain kinds of pathogens. We're taking muscle tissue, that's good for lots of different things that we do in terms of studying the phylogenetics of the birds. And the reason I'm mentioning that now is the other thing that we do when we necropsy the bird is we're actually collecting whole guts in some cases. So we, we've always had a tradition of collecting stomachs because we collect those for the contents. So if someone wants to know what a bird eats, we can actually open that up and we, we save those in, in little tubes of ethanol so they're preserved but we're actually freezing whole guts to actually look at some of these bacterial or viral communities inside of them. At that point, pretty much you're done processing the specimen. You've pretty much taken it apart in the field, other than extracted DNA from the different parts, and that's something that happens back here.